It's time to step inside the Octagon with your host, Ike Feldman. What's up, fight fans? What's up, combat sports community? It's your boy, Ike Feldman, being joined by my boy, at Charlie Quinn MMA on Instagram. Last time I seen Charlie was for the Floyd Mayweather and John Gotti, the third, uh, the second rematch, try to figure that out, in Times Square. But now, Charlie's not going to be the, doing the talking. He's going to be doing the walking. My man Charlie's fighting this Friday, Flex Fight Series 40. Shout out to Chris Mache, TJ Ragusa. Get your tickets now. DM Charlie. Holy moly. Charlie, you're doing the damn thing. Talk to me, brother. I'm excited, first and foremost. I mean, listen, it it takes balls to get in there. I'm not going to pat myself on the back, but other media members, other reporters have done it. And, you know, credit to them for paving the way. And, you know, giving, first of all, me the opportunity to do something like this because, you know, without guys like Ben, Oscar, you know, without guys like that paving the way, guys on even on Misfits, you know, influencers themselves, without those guys paving the way, this YouTube boxing type of stuff, paving the way for guys like us to go in there and get a chance. This could be a one and done. This could be a long-term thing. You know, there could be influencer fights coming out of this. This could be terribly wrong. This could go awful. You know, that's the fight game. That's what you get yourself into. But, you know, first and foremost, I got to thank you for having me. I'm very excited. You know, been some big time names on this show. You know, I'm happy, you know, just to have my name alongside those guys. And, you know, I- I'll cut to the chase. The reason why I'm doing this is I really want to do it. It's been on my bucket list. It's been something I've always wanted to do. I want to test myself. I want to get into the fire. I want to see how much of a man I am. It's the God's honest truth, you know, but when speaking of the Mayweather Gotti press conference, you know, you, you know, me and you have talked a bit about me fighting, you know, we, we went back and forth a couple different times and, you know, it may have sounded like, not that I was BSing, but it was a little exaggerative. And, you know, I think you said something to me about a card at MSG and I didn't think it was possible. I, I floated it around. I thought about it, found out it wasn't possible, but this came up. Still in New York. I'm a New York guy. If I was going to make the debut, it had to be in New York. That's, you know, New York or nowhere. That's my slogan. That's what we're rolling with. They're flying him out to come and get me. So we're doing this here. This is our show, and we're going to fucking work. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, I feel like you could interview yourself, man. I, I got to go. <laughs> that's a part of the, unfortunately, that's a part of the job. So. <laughs> I was going to ask, like, what, uh, what really, like, it, is this one of those like you don't want to be 50 years old, uh, 60 years old, 70 years old, and, and you're like, man, it shoulda, woulda, coulda? Nah, yeah, for sure. I mean, this that's why I'm going the experience route. I'm not going the, hey, let's go take a fight with one of these big promotions such as, you know, I'm not going to name drop anybody, but such as like a karate combat um, where I, you know, you never know how you're going to do. Your first impression is everything. You know, I'd like to get my feet wet. I'd like to get sort of a, a fair play matchup. Whereas it's a guy in the same position as myself, you know, not really experienced, not not much training experience as far as not day to day since he's a five year old, like anybody who really fights. Um, yeah. So this is this isn't it's not an experiment, but we'll see how it goes. You know, if all goes well, like it's supposed to, if we handle business on Friday night, the opportunity is just going to come on their own. I already have the following. I have the tough part done. I have the marketing side. I have all the stuff that the regional guys would love to have. I have that already. So. I may not have the same skill set. I may not be as, you know, inept to these opportunities like these guys are. But, hey, I'm going to piss a lot of people off in the process, and let's have fun with it. Yeah, and, and neither do Ben, neither do Oscar uh, that you mentioned. You know, they obviously aren't on the UFC caliber, but they, they have the marketing ability, the, the yeah. ability to talk like uh, Oscar was doing the press conference with the bare knuckle president was there. Like, th- there's no, like, weird young fighter interaction who's awkward in public like yep. you, you could grab the mic away and, and like it, <laughs> uh drop your promo it, it's it's pretty amazing but let's focus I mean, on my, the fight my thing is before to cut you off my thing with that is i couldn't name a single bare knuckle fight on that card outside of that one so that's how well they promoted it that's how good of a job those two did and that was my main event i watched that fight and didn't watch another that was it. That's the only fight of the night I watched. I'll be dead honest with you. And it, it might be the only fight that Dana watched. I, I heard he watched. It out of it, so I streamed it. Go ahead. Shoot me. Strike me dead. I didn't fucking 
So I watched that one singular fight and that was it. And I got my money's worth. I got my three minutes, whatever I did, whatever it was, four minutes, two minutes. I got my money's worth. A lot of knockdowns. It was exciting. So, but long story short, those guys paved the way without them. There's no, you know, there's none of us doing this. So I look to, you know, leave a good mark for the reporters and the media guys. I look to, you know, be the first one outside of Oscar, you know, who really has a finish in these types of fights. You know, you don't see many finishes from our side of the, of the field. You know, we had two guys go against each other. So, you know, you would have to hope in bare knuckles somebody's going to finish somebody. But we haven't seen anybody really do this in the MMA aspect. You know, I know Oscar Willis took a debut a couple of years ago. He got knocked down, got back up, won the fight. It was electric. It was sick. Aside from that, I don't think anybody's got the ball to step into the MMA octagon. I, I, I just don't. And now that these guys are going into bare knuckle, we'll see. You know, we'll, we'll see if anybody, you know, wants to come in here and throw some kicks, wants to come in here and go to the ground, we'll test their manhood. We'll see. You know, I'm interested. The door is open for me. Anybody wants to fight me, the door is now open. Now that I'm doing it, you know, there's no friends in the industry. Come on down. You know, I, I have a lot of respect for a lot of the reporters, a lot of the media guys who are fighting, but let's all make some money together if that's a possibility, you know. But listen, this could also go terribly wrong on Friday and then we'll never do it again. So that's the risk we're taking. All right. That's the risk. You know, as a guy like me, you are putting your credibility on the line, whereas I can go out there and get knocked out or I can go out there and get finished. I can go out there and even just lose by decision. And now for the rest of my life, any comment I make on MMA, there's going to be some sort of troll in the back saying, oh, you got fucked up. Oh, you lost. How could you speak on this? This, that. You're a fucking pony. This, that. So that's the risk you could take. I've always been an athlete. I played baseball, basketball my whole life. Obviously, on the football league, the flag league, tap in. I'm ready to roll, bro. I'm very excited. As you can tell how fast I'm speaking, I want this thing to just, I want to make the walk. I just want to hear Bob O'Reilly and see the hundred tickets that I sold and just, just lock oh, the fuck in. Man, you're going with the Bob O'Reilly. Oh, well, we know where we're from. Wow, dude. What a sick song. And for anybody who's like been to a UFC event, I'm pretty sure right before the pay-per-view or main event portion of the card starts, they play this amazing montage. Yep. And Forrest Griffin. Uh, Ronda Rousey, Anderson Silva, Chris Wyman. Like, it, it's beautiful, dude. That, that, And I plan to be there again this Friday, Flex Fight Series 40. If you can't be there, order it on pay-per-view, throwdownsports.tv. Uh, I'm pretty effing sure that's the correct <laughs> domain. But uh, you mentioned it, and, and I want to piggyback off that, the, the baseball background, the football background, the athlete background. Uh, no offense to Oscar Willis, maybe he played some soca in, in England or football. Uh, no offense to Ben, but I, I don't think if you pass him a basketball, he's going to know what to do with it or uh, hit a pop fly to him or a grounder. Uh, yeah, they, they look good. They, 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 they yep. look good on the mitts. But, man, I think you got that edge of, of being on a team, playing on a season of 20 plus games, 30 plus games. There, there is something to that. Uh, ha have you taken some of uh, your training regimen from those sports and applied it to your MMA training camp? Yeah, I mean, uh, being a baseball player, footwork was everything. So footwork has been really important in my camp. Um, obviously, it's got a long way to go, as as does anybody who's new to the sport, so to say. Um, footwork is everything. So, yeah, I, I, I'm a footwork between basketball, baseball, whether we're stealing a base, going back on a fly ball, charging in on a ground ball, taking a swing. Footwork was everything. So footwork – is going to be a major key how I have my entries, how I get in, how I get out. That's going to be everything. So we're gonna we're gonna find out real quick if if you know how we look. I'm I'm gonna keep I'm gonna shoot it straight with you. I'll know mentally how I feel in the first thirty seconds. I'll know right away. I'm gonna fuck this guy up, or we're in for nine minutes. So and how's how's the cardio feeling? Because it well, is a good. different type of cardio, I believe, uh, because of the nerves. More yeah, than listen, I'm I'm the cardio on my end is good. I'm a little worried about. You know, like I said, I did sell almost 100 tickets. You know, I'm probably the the most going to be the most watched prelim fighter this weekend. Woo! So I've never done it, obviously. So making that first walk, I'm going to be amped. It's it's hard for me to say that I'm not going to be amped. Look up in the crowd. All my boys are in the same section. Then I got my family. Then I got my, It's you know, it's it's hard to, you know, sit there and not soak it in. But I'd be lying if I said I gave a shit about any of that. I need to just get this done. Fuck this guy. Fuck everything about him. That's my mentality. I get it. It's a sport of respect. You want to respect your opponent. But I've never done this before, and I'm here to kill. I'm here to get it done by any means necessary. I don't care if there's 10 seconds on the clock and I lost the first two rounds. You have to do what you have to do. There's a goal. There's a mission. And like I said before, 
I don't need to deal with all the trolls. I don't need to deal with all the nonsense. But I'll have the balls to take a step in there and do it. Whereas all these guys, you know, they fucking, they run a big mouth. I'm not even going to at people. I'm not even going to name people on Twitter. But I want to, but I'm not going to because I have enough shit to worry about the next three days. I don't need to get into a little Twitter beef with some of these guys. But some of these guys run their mouths. It's not Ben, not Oscar. But some of these guys need a slap. And we might find out on the microphone Friday. So I'll have the microphone. I promise you that. The microphone will be in my hands after the fight. I promise you that. We're not leaving there with Doug. What do know? Not happening. I love it. I love it. Not and happening. Going back to that, uh, we did have a brief conversation, uh, walking and talking, following the the Mayweather and the Gotti uh, uh, presser. Yep. I was saying, dude, you don't have to tell anybody. You can just show up and fight. But, and I heard this from Rick Ross. He goes, buy something really expensive so it makes you work harder. Maybe you yep. can't afford it. Maybe you can just get by with it, but it's going to make you work harder to feel like you earned it and you could still sustain and, and not tank. Dude, oh, we're going to earn it. You, you took the fight. You you got 89 people and more, I'm sure, that are going to come. You're going to have people on the pay-per-view. People know about this on your social media. Was Is there something to, like, we also have this? To cut you off. We have an open bar after 10 to 2 at even Staten Island. You want to make got it? A you fucking want to after party. We got a more. We got a DJ. We got a rapper. You name it. We got it. So you come through more than welcome, bro. We love to have you. Amazing. We love it, bro. We're ready to roll. We are. If you're going to go in on this, you have to go all in. You have to treat it like a pro would treat it. You have to treat it the correct way. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to be willing to strap myself in a cage for up to nine minutes with another grown man who's twice my age, who's done it before. I've never done it before. That the risk you're taking, you better have a reward waiting for you after. So, you know, I'm not necessarily worried about the victory party, the after party, all that shit. But it'll be there waiting for me. So, you'll see. The team's walking out in all black. You'll see. It's a funeral. Lock it in. We'll come back to this. And I'll let you know. You'll remember I said it's going to be a funeral. That's what all black's for. You'll see us walking out in all black and you'll say, okay, fuck yeah. So, Wow. Little things. We're going to psych him out. Don't worry. We're going to be in his head a little bit mentally. The crowd's going to get to him. He's never fought in something like this. He's never competed in a sport in something like this. He's never had this hostile environment to come into. It's going to be like a Nick game. Ooh, or Duke game when the people like could be. feel it, like could be, it could be Duke Carolina coming into Cameron. So Amazing. I mean, guys, if you don't already... Follow Charlie on Instagram at Charlie Quinn MMA. Is there a, another uh, TikTok? Yeah, Twitter, it's all the same. Yeah, Twitter as well. Yes, I know the Twitter. Twitter. Um, don't follow me on Twitter if you're soft. You're not gonna like my opinions. They're not. <laughs> they're not very nice. They're not nice. Well, uh, but... well, well. On a on a sit down when you're in studio, we'll we'll talk about those opinions. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> but for now, focused on you, man. Uh, what did you learn about yourself? What did you find out about yourself? Is there a new skill set, uh, something that you like feel like, uh, Oh my God, I'm going to use this. Come. I mean, Friday. I found out that I found out that I'm not invincible. That's for sure. Um, find out there's levels to it. You know, I haven't been training with guys worse than me. That's not an option. I'm training with everybody. Everybody I train with is better than me. So, you that. know, you have to keep getting better and you have to train with killers. I've trained with pros. I've trained with amateurs. I've trained with guys who've never fought. You win some rounds, you lose some rounds. You lose more rounds than you win. Mentally, it's instilled that that guy's not going to be half as talented as the guys I'm going against in practice and in training and in rounds and in the gym. So mentally, that's half the battle. Now when I get in there and he feels my power a bit, then we'll know. Then we'll know right away that, you know, he's going to back up or we're in for a dogfight. So let's see. Let's test his manhood. Let's see. I learned that I have some serious power in my hands. I'm not afraid to wrestle. You know, you want to jits it up? We could jits it up. I don't think he has much jits. As far as I'm concerned, he's a guy from his fucking garage. So let's dance. You know, it's personal for me. It 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 shouldn't be, but it is. That's just it's just how I am, man. Look at the Irish flag. You see it up there. You got Tyson behind me. You got Charles Oliveira. I mean, you live this McGregor. shit. Uh, it's, it's, it's all, I love killers, man. I'm not into the soft shit. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. Habib is a killer. One of the greatest ever. That style is not for me. I don't enjoy watching that. I'm enjoying killers. I love watching guys like the guys behind you. Guys who go out there and they kill. Guys who go out there and they leave it there. Guys who go out there and they don't fucking quit. Nate Diaz does not quit. You might see some Nate Diaz. Maybe I'll get tired, but I ain't going to fucking quit. So, legend. 
Now, Talk to me, motherfucker. Let, let me ask then, because uh, there's a, there is a common theme among those fighters that you mentioned. They fight not like they're fighting in a sport. They fight like they're fighting you for like the last sandwich in jail. Mm-hmm. And is this what you're saying? You're going to fight with a, a certain type of attitude. It's not going to be like like kissing him on the fence. If you got him in a dominant position, looking at the ring girl like you're looking if you have any energy to do that, it's trying to finish the fight. Oh, if I'm not exhausted, it's finish the fight there. We're looking to get a finish. We're not looking to get out of here with decision. We'll take it. Listen, a win's a win. We'll take it. If the game plan goes to, you know, it works and we win by decision, we win. I want to finish. Personally, my team might feel otherwise. I personally want to finish. I'm, I'm not going to overextend myself and get myself hurt trying to get one. But I'm going to try. So. Have you have you had the twit the twitchies watching like the the fighters on TV and you're like Ooh, like it, it's it's happening for you like there's a certain degree like fighters always mention lo- things in their life start to become more clear when a fight is on the horizon or or like the noise gets silent like bullshit gets silent you see like uh, somebody who uh, used to just listen and nod your head now they're annoying you push them away they get out of your orbit like the mission. The hunt is there. Uh, are you starting to feel that? Yeah, I mean, I've been antsy for a couple of weeks. You know, the anxiety is definitely getting to me a bit. Um, as far as just wanting it, just to want to get in there. As far as pressure, nerves, stuff like that. I mean, I'm not not too nervous. I've played in you know in front of thousands of people on, on a baseball field. You know, from when I was 12 years old. So I, I, I'm not really nervous, but I would be lying if I said there wasn't a bit more pressure than I expected. Um, with the amount of people coming and the much the amount of support I've gotten, and you know the articles in the paper that I didn't really expect. And, you know, we're doing, interviews. Awesome. You know, we're doing interviews and stuff. So I, I, I didn't expect the outpour. I expected a little more hate, but Hey man, fuck it. We rolled the punches. I thrive off the hate. I like when, I like when somebody hates me. It's weird, but there's definitely people who want to see you fail. 100%. Because 1, you are a name in the space. 100%. And I'll be waiting, you know, I'll be waiting on my fuck you tour on Friday night. So I'll be waiting because we're getting the hand raised. And you'll see it fairly quickly on Instagram. Incredible. I'm ready to roll. I'm dialed in. I'm locked in. The last thing we got to do is make weight and we're good. We had a good camp. You know, we had some issues with, you know, with the team. We have a bit of a new team in here. But um, listen, fuck it. Shit happens. Sport moves on. Life moves on. Not going to really address what happened. But listen, shit happens. You know, people are, are selfish and they do things for themselves. And the- this we'll do things to saying, the community. You, you learn. You learn. You learn. When, you live when, and you learn. People do things for themselves and people do things for others. And people think people do things collaborative. What I was dealing with dealt with none. So it is what it is. We move on. No disrespect. I have a goal. Their intentions and their, you know, opinion on my goal differentiated. So we'll see. I have a bit of a chip fuel. on my shoulder. And it's I have a fuel. bit of a chip on my shoulder. I'd be lying if I said it in. And doing this stuff just keeps me more locked in. So and I couldn't agree more with the uh, – you said this a couple minutes ago, but maybe one of the first answers about learning about yourself. And this this is one of those moments in your life, man. You're going to find out Let's about see. your soul, your DNA. And yep. I believe you're coming to kill. And I Let's can see, feel yo. that in you. I can feel that in you. You're a fun guy. You're a joyous person to be around. But I don't want to be across from you on Friday night. That's... I'm ready to fucking roll, man. And I'm I'm gonna let him know that when I see him on Thursday. I'm not gonna be disrespectful. If you say come prepared. That's it. Come prepared. We're making sure he's making weight. So he makes weight, I make weight. We get locked in there for nine minutes, hopefully less, and we'll see. Let's see what he has. Let's see what I have. That simple. You know, I'm in the sport a minute now. I'm in the sport a couple years now. I've earned my right to do something like this, in my opinion. This isn't a clout chase. This is I have the clout already. I'm not tooting my own horn, but right. Got a shit ton of views and follows and all that stuff. It means nothing if you can't execute. So right. I'm ready to go. No, you're, dude, you're putting the chips in the middle. Ex- ex- expect a war on Friday. I'm ready to go. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be the first one to move back. My chips are in the middle. This has to be a statement. You're gonna go fight. You know, an amateur fight like this. You're gonna go fight a guy who nobody's ever heard of. You better take care of business. Right. That's how I feel. So I'm gonna take care of business. Put my highlight reel on. Do whatever I gotta do. We're gonna celebrate, and then we'll focus on the next one. And if there's not a next one, there's not a next one. But if there is one, I'll be ready. Even it. if win, lose, or, win, lose, or draw, I'll be ready. We ain't losing. But win, lose, or draw, I'll be ready. I will do this again probably. 
and dude, you are like entering that like that physical prime. Like uh, like I, I really this it could be dangerous. It could be dangerous. Yeah, I'm, I'm just getting healthy again. I haven't been healthy in years, so I'm just. It, it was almost a thirty to forty pound cut. So wow. for an amateur is what bonkers. was the what was the hardest thing? What are you like a sweets guy? Or are you uh... fucking love Wendy's, man? Oh, I it's what dude. it is. I don't know what it is about. You know Wendy's. the app. My wife's got the app. It's dangerous, bro. I love Wendy's, man. I love Wendy's. It's bad. So she works the 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 third shift, the the three to eleven thirty, and yes. uh, instead of like the you up text, it's like Wendy's question mark, and I'm like, yes. oh my god, oh. <laughs> the pretzel oh. bun with the bacon in it, dude. We're gonna have to do a Wendy's sit down. Uh, Bro, we'll go get Wendy's. We'll go to the gym. We'll do everything. After not the yet. Fight. I'll come by. I'll come. I'll come not out yet. to you. Hold me to it. Not yet. Hold me to it. After the fight. No Wendy's yet. Not yet. After the fight. After the fight. Not Trust after me. the weigh-in, though. No, not after the weigh-in. We got a Don't full. people do full crazy things. Full no. professional team taking care of the weight cut and the weigh-in. That, that's we'll, what I'm we'll, saying, man. Uh, we were talking. You do it. You do it right. You, before the recording, I was saying if if you work like you train or produce content like you train or just like keep the energy like you train, dude. It, it's it's a foregone conclusion. And Tony Jun- Dungy, the great uh, Super Bowl coach, he said. If you are prepared, you have nothing to fear. Obviously, the adrenaline is going to be there. So it's like you walk in, you see family members, you see friends. What? 10% gets cut. And then it's like, all right, I'm about to fight somebody. The thing is that you train so hard that some people probably walk in there with 70% of cardio or 80%, 90%. Maybe some UFC guys, the triathletes, 100% can keep their cool. But you're going to have nerves. You're going to, like I said, see people. It, it's going to be a surreal moment. The mat is going to feel weird. The lights are bright. And it's like, I believe truly that you have trained so hard and put in the work that even with all that extra energy, you're still going to lock in and get it done. I'm ready to roll, bro. I'm excited. I appreciate the kind words. I'm ready to roll. I'm just ready to get this final couple pounds off, ready to get the weight off and, you know, go put it on a show for my family, friends and, you know, in the city. It's it's this is what this is. This is this is bigger than me. That's what I want to come to understand. You know, I own a football league with, with my partner. My dad owns a baseball field with his partner. You know, my dad's a big baseball coach in, in New York. You know, my brother's big time in L.A. and Vegas. And this is more than just me. So this is this is for a lot of people that that we're putting on a show for. And I'm not going to let anybody down. I'm not I'm not going to take the first step back. So we're here to put on a show and we're here to win. And. You know, I hope we have a hostile crowd. I don't give a shit. Just don't throw anything at the guy. But go crazy. Go batshit crazy. Fuck him. He's the opponent. We're in there to kill. He's in there to take my head off. I'm in there to take his head off. It's that simple. I don't care if it's amateur, pro, wrestling, kickboxing, whatever it is. I'm going to beat him. So we could do it. Let's see. That simple. I'm ready to roll. Wow. Wow. Folks, again, if you do not follow Charlie, you better be following by now. Like, I'm freaking pumped. Uh, Charlie is a big reason why I got my ass to the gym finally this Monday. It's like, dude, he's got he's got to fight this right. I, I can roll my ass to the gym finally. Amazing, Charlie. Again, follow him on Instagram at Charlie Quinn MMA. If I can just distract you for a couple minutes, UFC 308. Just want to ask you about the, the final two fights. You cool with that? Yeah. All right. I'm Zat Whitaker. How's that? What do you got? Bobby Knuckles. Okay. Why? It's I it's in Abu Dhabi. You gotta you gotta look I, at the... I, I don't actually think he's gonna win, but I'd love for him to win. Um Hamzat's got Hamzat's got way too much hype behind him. His his wrestling is real, his his hands are heavy, but I know Whitaker is good in all those categories. He's probably the most well rounded fighter, one of the most well rounded fighters on the entire roster out of all the divisions. Um he's real good, but he's a bit chinny. Um I love Bobby Knuckles, but he's a bit chinny, and Hamzat hits hard, and we've learned he could take a shot. So I'm curious. I, we got to see Hamzat get there. We have to see him get there. Until he gets there, I'm not commenting on it. That being said, Max Holloway, masterclass, dog walk, five-round decision, dog walks him. Dog walks him. He is way too worried about shit that doesn't matter. He is way too worried about taking pictures in this car, going to this game, doing this appearance, talking shit about McGregor, talking shit about this guy, O'Malley, Marab, every fighter. 
Worry about the belt, bro. Max Holloway hasn't lost to anybody besides Volk at 45 in decades. The last guy he lost to was McGregor. It was in 2013 in Boston. Get fucking real. So, but Ilya hits. Ilya's, Ilya's dog. Ilya's dog. I happen to be Volk, so. That being said, it's it's Max. Max is too technical for him. Max is is he's gonna push the pace. Ilya hasn't fought those five round wars like Max has. So experience is key. And if we get past the first two rounds, you might see Max Holloway at minus fifteen hundred. Wow, 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 wow. Folks, you heard it here. Drop some nickels and dimes on Max Blessed Holloway. The Blessed Express returns this Saturday, UFC through eight Abu Dhabi. But before that, Flex Fight Series 40 Friday night. Is it Amazora is the name of the spot? I think so. I'm pretty sure. I got to test my memory. Uh, MMA stuff, I feel like I'm pretty good. So uh, this Friday, again, throwdownsports.tv if you can't make it to the fight. But uh, I'm going to try my hottest to get there, and I can't wait to see Charlie put on a fight. Shout-outs to Harry Mack, who will be in the corner. Shout-outs to Charlie's brother, who will also be there, and... Your coach, I, I forget. Right through all the Staten Island Boxing Academy. Let's go. I've heard great things about your boxing, so very excited to see the wheels of motion. My man, Charlie, is there any final shout out you'd like to give? All I got to say is if if you're doubting me, if you got something negative to say, we'll readdress this on Friday night and fuck you. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do Amazing. it, my boy. Appreciate At Charlie you, my boy. Quinn, MMA. Love Look you, brother. Thank you for the time. I appreciate you. Thank you.